Hi, my name is Dave Bryant, Vice President of Composite Technology Corporation based in Irvine, California. Our company was founded to design, develop, and deploy composite solutions for problems facing the utilities industry. Our first product introduction is the Aluminum Conductor Composite Core, or ACCC, power cable that was engineered to deliver twice as much current as conventional steel reinforced aluminum conductors. Unlike steel reinforced conductors, which sag as temperatures are elevated, our ACCC conductor utilizes a carbon fiber, glass, and epoxy core, which has a coefficient of thermal expansion several times less than that of steel or other core materials. The resulting reduction in sag allows the ACCC conductor to deliver twice as much ampacity or current as conventional conductors. The ACCC core is nearly 30% stronger than its steel counterpart and exhibits nearly 30% less line losses. These decreased line losses allow the utility companies to deliver more electricity while decreasing their fuel costs and generation emissions. During the last several months, CTC has performed a significant number of structural and electrical tests to confirm product characteristics. Up until now, these tests have primarily been performed inside lab environments. Today, we will actually begin field testing at EPRI's facility in Hazlitt, Texas. Our primary goals of this installation will be to determine how well conventional gripping devices, tools, and machinery perform with the new ACCC conductor. I'm a Tip Goodwin. I'm a manager of technology delivery at EPRI Solutions facility outside of Fort Worth, Texas. The EPRI facility is an engineering and diagnostic center that belongs to the Electric Power Research Institute and EPRI Solutions is a subsidiary of EPRI uh, that operates the facility for EPRI. This week we're working with CTC on the development of their new uh, ACCC AC, CC composite core uh, aluminum conductor that they're developing for the transmission world. The ACC conductor uses fully annealed aluminum strands which makes them much more pliable and um, malleable. If you don't grip the wire correctly, you might pull the, conduct the aluminum strands off of the core wire and that would be a problem during the stringing process. So we're going through a number of different gripping technologies and, and equipment to come up with what's the best and most practical application of tools to string wire. Sliding grips or Klein grips are traditionally used to catch off the wire when you're pulling it in or, or grabbing it to do your cut-ins to put your dead ends or your splices on. And uh, they're a critical tool in the process. Another tool that, or another uh, item that we were using was uh, Kellum's grips or socks which are like a Chinese finger lock system that you place over the end of the conductor and then when you pull on the end it snugs down on the wire and acts like a Chinese finger lock and then you can pull the wire. And those are important for the stringing operation because they'll move the easiest through the travelers and the stringing blocks. My name is John Johnson. I'm with Great Southwestern Construction. We're going to be stringing this uh, new conductor out with a composite core. And our main concern when we're stringing this is going to be trying to keep this, this core from sliding back and forth while we're stringing. Or has it moved hardly any? Mm, no, it hasn't. Looks good. That's a A number one plus bonus there. Now we've got the sock ready for pulling the wire in through the running blocks and the single groove uh, strain clamp or sliding grips will hold the tension for us to do the uh, sagging in the conductor for tensioning it. And so we're ready, we have the tools we need now to go out on the test line and string the wire. The second phase of what we're going to do this week is actually string some wire on our test line. We have a two mile test line and we're going to string two phases, uh, a mile of each phase. We have uh, two, two suspension spans 
and then a 30 degree uh, angle because one of the things we'll be interested in seeing is how the annealed aluminum travels through that uh, stringing block as we pull it and string the line. And then we will be clipping that in with several different suspension uh, hardwares. And then we have dead ends and splices to dead end the wire. And they are a new product that's being developed to handle the, the core strand and the annealed aluminum strands for the ACC conductor. I'm Dave Ayers, Director of Business Development for Great Southwestern Construction in Castle Rock, Colorado. We're here at the EPRI facilities in Hazlitt, Texas to install some new conductor that is manufactured by Composite Technology Corporation in Irvine, California. Great Southwestern Construction is excited to be part of the new technology that Composite Technology Corporation brings to this industry. As an electrical contractor, we do not see any problems in installing the new conductors. And my name is Gary Bowles. I'm Vice President of Engineering for Electrical Consultants Incorporated. We're based out of Billings, Montana. Our relationship with Composite Technology Corporation goes back approximately five years. Uh, we've been working with them through that period to develop this new conductor, uh, the ACCC conductor. Our, our company is primarily involved in utility work. We've got 15 years of experience or more as a company, uh, hundreds of years of experience on staff in doing utility work and uh, design of substations, transmission lines, telecommunications. Uh, our experience has been that uh, the industry is in, in dire need of, of this sort of a product uh, through the number of the operating projects that we perform for a number of utilities. The advantage to the industry is that with this conductor we'll be able to solve many of the uh, grid problems, uh, higher ampacity, we can uh, maintain uh, a much greater uh, clearance to ground, we can have more latitude in the design, we can change the tensions, we can change the sag to allow us to um, install this conductor in uh, high density areas, we can uh, be able to reduce the tension so that mitigations to structures isn't going to be necessary. It's got a tremendous application in the industry that will will uh, be probably the biggest uh, change in over 100 years. My name is Dave Hamilton. I'm a product manager with uh, FCI Burndy Products. Uh, we joined in a, a group development effort with CTC uh, a little over a year ago uh, to jointly develop uh, connectors that can be used to terminate composite core cable. Uh, basically, we want to determine in, in installing the connectors and as the linemen install the cable, if there is any differences in techniques required or equipment to install this cable uh, versus st installing standard ACSR cable. And uh, CTC is uh, monitoring the cable itself and the radius that are created by pulling through the blocks. We in turn are interested on the connector technology of it where we can in turn uh, crimp the cable and apply the wedges to the cable in a suitable manner that is in conjunction with what the standard practices are today for the industry for transmission lines. We had to develop a wedge type of technology and a mechanical type pressure to uh, complete the crimp on these connectors without uh, impairing on the integrity of the core itself. Later on today uh, we will be pulling some cable through the blocks uh, replacing a current transmission line up there and uh, we will be installing dead ends uh, on both ends of the cable. And then uh, after that, we will also cut in a splice uh, to determine if the techniques are suitable. The crew from Great Southwestern has begun installing termination poles at both ends of this installation so that existing Bluebird cable can be terminated, allowing the new Drake size ACCC conductor to be installed. As the new poles are being installed, other members of the team have already begun installing the temporary shiv wheels mounted directly to each insulator along the pathway of towers. This installation spans over several existing towers with a 30 degree shift in direction midway. The span between towers is approximately 1,000 feet. As pole installation nears completion, the crew begins to load its trailer with the ACCC conductor supplied on metal reels. Having loaded up, the reel truck is pulled into position just downstream from the bull wheel machine through which the ACCC cable will be released with controlled tension. After terminating one side of the old Bluebird cable, the installation side of the cable is attached to the new ACCC conductor with conventional socks. 
A take-up machine is positioned at the far side of the installation and the Bluebird conductor cable is employed to pull in the new ACCC cable. Crew members pay close attention to the cable and attachments and monitor the progress of the installation as it travels through each shiv wheel. Moving again, the team prepares to receive the end of the new cable, which, upon receipt, is temporarily tensioned with the Chicago grips. Excess cable is cut off and the linemen begin to install dead-end assemblies. While we were stringing this in, we were using Bluebird wire to pull in this uh, 795. So our stringing tensions were very extreme on our Bluebird end. They were, we were pulling at 4,400 pounds of pressure to pull the Bluebird out and pull in the new wire, which you never would string that tight. But it made it all the way in and didn't strip the sock off and things went well. Though Composite Technology Corporation's ACCC cable is installed using conventional tools and techniques, the dead end and splice assemblies are somewhat unique. Each conductor consists of two wedges positioned inside a steel housing, which are used to grip the ACCC structural core. As the ACCC cable is pulled to tension, the wedges slide inside the housing, generating increasingly higher gripping strength. The completed assembly is then attached to the dead end structure or pole. Once a satisfactory grip is achieved, the aluminum housing is pulled over the dead end device and crimped using conventional hydraulic crimping machine. After completing the first dead end installation, the cable is pulled to tension at the opposite end of the installation and the new conductor is checked for compliance with the installation instructions using a standard pulling technique. This technique allows field personnel to measure the time elapsed between waveforms they generate by tugging on the rigging rope. Charts created by Alcoa SAG-10 program allow the installation crew to input ambient temperature and span distances and tension the cable to a SAG depth accurate to within one diameter of the cable, or in this case, one inch and 1,000 feet. Okay, you can see in the conductors often in the distance where the one closest to us is the ACCC 1020 KCML wire, and the, the one on the far side is the uh, blue, ACSR Bluebird. You can see the difference in the sags. The um, ACCC sag is approximately 24 feet. The uh, Bluebird is something in the neighborhood of 40 feet. So you can see the difference in the, uh, the sag between the two conductors. On the second conductor installed in this installation, a splice is installed in the ground, which is essentially two dead-end wedge assemblies attached back-to-back -back with a reverse threaded rod. The splice is completed on the ground, released into the air, and the ACCC conductor is tensioned conventionally. The crew replaces the temporary installation shiv wheels with conventional hangers. We're just finishing up the dead end on that. On our last one, we pulled two miles of this, and overall, everything just went wonderful. Our goal of moving this product from the lab floor to the field was incredibly successful. The insulation couldn't have gone any better than it did.